we made it. This will probably end up being the last episode just because of how far we are. Um, I something happened with the game, so I had to like uninstall it and reinstall it, and I had to do over everything that I'd already done before, which was very frustrating, but also surprisingly quick when you don't have to read the text. <laughs> it took me like under 10 minutes, which is sweet. Um, so, oh yeah, I've remembered my apron this time. And uh, these are e-girl hearts, not teardrops. They're, they're tiny. So I was worried when I saw them on the camera, but it's too late to take them off. All right. Let's go. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live an exciting Oh, it looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Mm -hmm. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish she might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him? Or keep it a secret just for you? You know what? He shared his secret ingredient with me, so yeah, fair, fair's fair. Uh, you decided that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach to your lunch bag with a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. I fucking hate coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' uh, Lux hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent! Together, you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment tearing up <laughs> you could offer to make him more but he seems like a very sentiment sentimental kind of guy no kidding sure why not I want to know who's in the urn please make yourself comfortable I'll be back in just a moment you realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping that was a gorgeous view please don't snoop around his shit around the room are various items you that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. <gasps> you gaze across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? <laughs> I could just tell you my name right now, it's- Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack, and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. Tap on an item to discover more about Colonel. Oh snap, there's so many I- there, This. You take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it, it's dusty, but when you- Wipe it off, you can read the inscription. Oh! <laughs> it's so emo. It says, here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. Okay. Uh, what's this? This must be where he kept- where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. Don't snoop like that, you silly bitch. As soon as you turn the dial to 11 11 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Hmm. 
I would not trust that from KFC, that's for sure. There's, oh my gosh, so in my, in my, like, where I live, uh, there's a combination KFC Taco Bell, and every single time I eat there, I get violently sick without fail. In high school, I knew some kids that worked there, and, like, just hearing the stories about, like, how gross it was, I just, ugh, I can't, oh, it's gross. <sighs> I just can't eat there. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. What's this candle? A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? Oh yeah. No, it's one of those secret recipe ingredients. It's... Ooh, I, I want to open this, but I am curious about the chicken. You know, it's a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a cor corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real. Taxidermy must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads the true state bird of the great state of Kentucky <laughs> you're damn right okay this just opens but I want to see what like these are these two are about first I don't know if I have like a limited number of items to click uh let's see the photo appears to be Colonel Sanders except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt is he like a time traveler or some kind of like vampire or something? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. Oh, okay, so you can tap each individual picture. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. That's cute. But I don't see the chicken sticks, the chicken drumsticks in the picture, so I think I'm lying to myself. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. <laughs> An adorable tiny, oh, an adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that must be Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. <laughs> Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded. Am I right? <laughs> a lock of silver hair woven through the teeth of the comb. You can clone them. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair they're in isn't just silver in color. It's actually made of spun silver. <laughs> Alright. Secret door! You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off the its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Don't try on people's clothes without their permission. <sighs> Idiot. Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act <laughs> casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Just say you were cool. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Damn right it does. Oh crap, the jacket, you fool. You forgot to take it off. You decide that now is your moment to make a big move. You tell him you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. <sighs> make a big move. That sounds risky. Telling him you're cold is like the safest option. But like, you should probably just tell him the truth, honestly. That's... Yeah. I was snooping, I'm sorry. You confess. <laughs> I think I've developed feelings for you. Oh, okay. 
Oh! I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. <laughs> but the thought of looting, of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. So dramatic. Colonel. Hmm. Yes, doctor. Always tearing up. I honestly th think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. Alright, you talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! <laughs> nice! Alright. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. That is beautiful. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, it isn't even legal. But the recipe is secret, how will they know? They're putting marijuana in the chicken. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. Okay, okay. It's meticulous. <laughs> Taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine, and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest kif gift to cookery? Take him down a peg. <laughs> just wreck him, or flatter him. I'm just gonna flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes at the window. Aww. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Oh, snap. Business partner, here could he be t talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. I just... Why? Why is that my first move. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? <laughs> I... <laughs> because I had one heck of a night. Oh boy. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Can we get a side story of that? Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. Oh, that's exciting. I think I can believe that. <laughs> since I've been, oh, since I'd been partnered with Pop, he asked me to go out with him. Aw, good for her. Of course I told him you'd better harness those wild horses young man I'm not that kind of girl you tell him but he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me so I said yeah sure I can get to know the little guy long story short he took me to his favorite shush house but things quickly spiraled out of control this better be appropriate for YouTube did she just say shush house as if that's a thing people just say? What is that even referring to? <laughs> that's my question too. Why is she crying? I know I'm not really sure where we stand. So ask him. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story. However, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. 
Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. That's fair. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. You've got like one day of class left. F just focus on that. Like get his number and then your steady spaghetti. After a short argument, you both agreed to go your separate ways. What? My bestie. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Oh man. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious! No! <laughs> oh, it's great! I'll order you up one right away! That's horrible! I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. He <laughs> he, sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Uh. Poor fool. You can get your swirly dipped too. It's so gross. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. <laughs> That's fair. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ooh. You've got some nerve doctor suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. Ooh. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you win some pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. Shove it, Van Van. I'll never give up. Ever. Yeah. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A natural in oh, a naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Doctor, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. I agree. What is he doing complimenting her? She had a great mm. dish. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Ooh. Excuse me, doctor, I am more than capable enough for speaking from- or I am more- than capable enough to speak for myself. Uh oh, he's irritated with me. Which is fair, because I can like learn to shut up a little, you know? <sighs> Maybe you can tell me more about your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Doctor. <laughs> Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the Quad to get some distance. Like, chill out. Chill out a little. He'll, he'll find out eventually, probably. And if not, then he's probably a bit of a dummy. I mean, what, what can you do? I mean, I, like, apparently she's been like a bitch to you throughout childhood, so like, couldn't you just, just share some stories with him about that? Or be like, hey, heads up, this chick sucks. I don't know. Like, you've had plenty of opportunities to tell him. But you just haven't. <laughs> in an attempt to distract yourself from how you slight, oh, from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you received yesterday and start flipping through the pages. This will not go well. Wow, that's that book. It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can't- oh, I can think of one surefire way to find out. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. Don't do it. Don't you dare do it. I could use this spell here and it says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories 
If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your fingers? Right? <laughs> okay, fine. It is drastic. drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. No, this is not desperate times. You're so dramatic. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. That's not a good excuse to try it out. Don't do it after all. That's what I'm telling you. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. Good. <laughs> it's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something a dog moment coming oh I feel something of a dog moment coming on. But I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. What's that mean? His cute little nose scrunches up as he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Um so, I might get bit if I try to do that. Although, trying to help him might be a good idea. But, uh, giving him some old homework as a snack might backfire. What if he's, like, insulted? Um. Oh, I am curious what will happen. However, alright, I'll try to help him. You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Okay. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles a sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. Ahem. I apologize for the outburst. I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world satisfies like ungraded work. My my. Doctor, were you studying something with cinnamon? I have been sitting in on a lecture series about the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important, important point. Thank you, Doctor, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable piece of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by sad whimpering coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. But I miss you. Oh. We went on one date, Pop. And how can you miss me when I'm right here? <laughs> oh. Pop's voice quivers as he pleads his case to Miriam. They're in the same class. He needs to chill. Every time I blink, you go away again. Oh. Oh. You know those, like really gross, really clingy couples that you would see in the halls like before school or between classes and they'd just be like making out or whatever. This is what that makes me think of. Like just that discomfort. And like if you know you have to pass them while they're going at it, I, I hated that. I hated it. it. Sucked. That's a really cute thing to say. Miriam, what happened between you and Pop? I got her in trouble and now she's mad at me. I didn't just get in trouble. I got yelled at by Pop's mother who blames me for getting him <laughs> banned from every museum we set foot in. What? Oh, so that's what you meant by shush house. Pop, we went on one date. We're over. And it meant so <laughs> much to me that I made this for you. Aww. Too hurt to go on arguing, Pop leaves this, uh, creation behind and runs out of the room. I love it because it's adorable, but it looks absolutely repulsive to eat. Nothing <laughs> like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. <laughs> But we mustn't be distracted 
from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches, so you all need your arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul in oh nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay, I'm so mad I could mash a tiny mug spilling several droplets droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. What? How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise th through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Oh yeah. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Of course not! <laughs> well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure that there's a pony out there with your name on it, and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show you a, to show a little interest anyhow. Yeah. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. I love soup. I believe that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van the supposed man-man and his evil lyric counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to rush through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Doctor's famous chicken pot pie. Ooh. After practicing for months, making the dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Doctor, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. That's right, this is finals. This is no time for boys. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. Yeah! But that decision gets hard to stick to when... The oven timer goes off behind you. Uh, yeah, just fess up. It's, it's fine. Okay, 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 you got me. <laughs> I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's terrifying and impressive. <laughs> That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. Uh, so true. You knew it was a pot pie from just the smell? Not just pot pie, but chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. All butter cr uh, uh. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no, I can smell that was made with a he heaping help of, of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Yeah. The moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There, <laughs> there are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step in for the cook-off of a lifetime. I hope this is not timed. You decide that mac and cheese, plus the pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that'll pull you over the edge to victory. 
Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are, pre are prepping wildly elaborate dishes, per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Yeah. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing the 11, his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity of in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10, with a frenzy of action. <sighs> Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare for their as they prepare their food wow this is getting serious that sounds like a anime fight sequence of course colonel sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air <laughs> egg wash uh miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth delightful best friend faster blaster Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid! <laughs> Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. <laughs> Shallow personality spatula! Even Clank gets into it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> It's the singularity! It was foretold! <gasps> we mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all! self destruct <gasps> Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him <laughs> out the back door of the arena. Are you frantically pre As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? Oh no. Don't you dare use the book. You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic? Even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Absolutely not. I'm gonna heed Spork Monster's warning. Uh, do it the hard way. Plus, Colonel Sanders said um, earlier at my last cracking battle, uh, you should do it the hard way, not the easy way. Um, who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, doctor. <laughs> Miriam notices, too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, doctor, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. <laughs> You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. Oh, yeah. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Is that allowed? Well, he's... Sprinkle said that there's no rules. <laughs> oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Why, Miriam, would you do that? Uh-huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? Bah! Okay. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Also, just because it's like a super secret special ingredient doesn't mean it should go into everything. Like, c cinnamon's great, but you wouldn't put it into, like, um... Like, salmon, probably. I mean, there's this really good, like, um... Vanilla salmon recipe. But, I don't know. I'm going off on a tangent. It is I, Steve the Spork Monster. So his name's Steve... I forgot his last name. <laughs> Borko. Steve Borko, is that it? Steve, wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. Okay. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, and I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Thank you, Steve. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition? I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids in your culinary schools really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Aww. 
I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? No, no I mean, it's fine to watch as long as he just shuts up. <laughs> Steve the Swark Monster notices that you've got the Grim War snatched beneath, stashed beneath your cooking station. Ooh, I see what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Ha, yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country, aw, he was a pup. That's cute. You can feel spork monster winding up to tell a very long and uninvolved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Aw. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school when I had fallen asleep during scare tasks tactics class and when I woke up you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint Oh, when they cry like all of their eyes tear up that's that's fun never mind I'll tell you later good luck all right sounds later sounds good having suffered his this huge setback you don't know if, how you could ever win you summon extra power from deep down within yourself you give up and drop out of culinary school no, you won't. You gotta see it through. I mean, just keep going. Dropping out, you're guaranteed to fail. But if you keep, like, pushing through it, you could still, like, there's a chance of you succeeding, even if it seems hopeless. And I mean, at least you try it, even if it doesn't pan out. Uh, I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Doctor, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. Oh, show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know uh, that this power, oh, with this power you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear doctor, you may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today. I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. That's what I do, baby. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese. And time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? There are no rules. Following the rules has never even been my thing. I follow my heart. You go, man. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. That's true. Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. Oh, shit. <laughs> With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hehe, <laughs> I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? You're really gonna make her after she- <laughs> Didn't she just dump him? You're gonna make her let him out? Inside of the closet you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Oh, poor kid. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a, red for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? <sighs> I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. Oh, that's not his fault, though. He should get a retry, I think. 
I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Prank. Pranks. Clank. Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear it. Signature weird beep or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow we must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. Wait, unplugged? <sighs> but didn't he like roll across town to class? So is, does he just have like a million extension cords? Or is he like battery powered? Or how does Clink function? That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made... Oh, that's delightful! Oh, she even made it a tiny little tea tag. Tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny... Uh, I'm gonna butcher this, I'm so sorry. Uh, Nerutumaki, I spy a float in this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. <laughs> yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all myself. Aww. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A+. plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Aw. Thank you, Doctor, for helping me to believe in myself. You got it. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uh... Uni or uni. I'm sorry. <laughs> Over smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. I hate caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different co colored type of urchin? <laughs> yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to s sniff the, the dish. <laughs> I'm sorry. But he can't get his dog nose close enough on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw it erratically, causing the custard to slash to slosh around. Oh, Woof woof. Aw. Please be gentle with my cuisine. I think his cuisine needs to be gentle with sprinkles. Finally, sprinkles goes all in tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Aw. Youch, my tongue. The professor appeals, appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. Oh, snap. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. Oh, A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would make it difficult to eat? Shut up, me. <laughs> Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. <laughs> Disqualified for glamour. Don't disqual. Don't don't disqual. Fuck. Don't discount simplicity. I'm trying to say it like him. It's hard. This isn't the last you'll hear of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog, and I can. And I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Interesting. Next student. Ashley, it's time to step up. Wow. Oh. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rosewater syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. 
Oh, that's sick. I love that. That's great. Rosewater syrup. I've made jasmine um, simple syrup before, and it turned out really good. You can use it to like sweeten your tea, and it's really nice. I've never tried Turkish Delight, though. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. <sighs> Don't eat the food at a cooking school. So like, in TV shows and movies, you know how they'll have like cakes and food and shit for that. Um, that's That would actually be a great career option for her. Or also like showpiece work. Um, if she wants to make food that looks amazing, but uh, isn't really meant to be eaten. Uh, get toast in your ears. Oh, got toast in your ears or something? Doctor, I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. Oh, you poor fool. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. <laughs> I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. Oh, snap. She's good gonna she's gonna snap ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you got him and with that Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone yeah, okay this isn't the last you'll hear of me either if this class gets much smaller I'll be teaching myself <laughs> You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the roll, a literal drum roll plays. Just where I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this? this thing and completely blow me away in my 49 dog years of life i've never tasted anything so delicate oh so delicious and perfectly balanced <laughs> awesome okay it's so delicious in fact that everyone passes the class <laughs> you pass you pass and you pass you all get a pass or uh, and you get a pass sorry he's not oprah um, everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive. Even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Aw, oh, they're crying. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment. To get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Am I going to get to dance with Colonel Sanders? Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. That is cute. I like that. <laughs> DJ Dog is in the house. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Oh snap. Oh, she's adorable. I love her outfit. 
Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they have committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. Good for them. For a moment, you actually believe them. Oh. Not another haunting. <laughs> no ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. <laughs> I was never actually a ghost. I was... Oh, it was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together. But wait, so he's been following me around, like, for real. What? <laughs> and now that everyone is together. It's the spork monster. He w has totally mellowed out. But which spork monster? Is it, um, the one whose name starts with a B? So sorry, I forgot it. I'm terrible with names. Or is it Steve? Or that one. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name. Party monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, party monster. Dejected. Student walks off. Oh, I love her outfit too. She's adorable. That's cute. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking. And you know <laughs> she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? I wonder. Oh, that's actually surprising. It's Pop. He arrives late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat, a crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you were able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> and we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of edu educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. <laughs> Miriam, will you be my lady king? <laughs> what an incredible turn of events, an offer to join the royal family. It's like a dream come true. You'll get to be a princess or maybe a queen. I'm not sure if he even knows. But either way, crowns and gowns, baby. I'm sorry, Pop, but I'm not interested. Not now, at least. I've got so much to do with my life. Yeah, Miriam, you choose you. A twist on a twist. So, so many more three-day universities to attend. So many tiny foods meticulously sculpted and then watched get accidentally blown away by a single breeze. That sounds so disheartening. Okie doke. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank. And I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. That's sick. What? Yeah, that's we got spork monsters and talking dogs, but this is what this is what breaks you. What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. A portal opens up and Click disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal. <laughs> he stole my recipe for coleslaw. Is that it? Probably. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? Question mark? No, it's not the end. Oh. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Oh. Doctor, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know. Just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. Just ask them yourself. I wonder, might you tell me what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? 
off the top of my head, uh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day, aww. Would you dance with me? <laughs> just brutally reject him right here and now. Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off, and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Doctor. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll need- Oh, I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I'll- I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Oh, screw you, man. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll in at pastry school. Oh, screw you, man. Oh, my dear doctor. I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Is that the end? <laughs> Is that the... Yeah, bro. Oh man. <laughs> Screw you, do uh, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> after all of that, after you cried eating my coleslaw, you're gonna tell me I'm not qualified to run a restaurant? Disrespectful. All right, I I'm I'm over Colonel Sanders now. Um. Oh man, that was wild. <sighs> okay, thank you all for watching. Um, feel free to comment what else you'd like to see me play or whatever. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and that, that this wasn't awful for you. Um, that was a lot to, to take in. <laughs> After all of that, he doesn't respect me as a chef. I hate him. <laughs> um, I hope you'll have a lovely day. Uh...